What up, YouTube? It's your boy Carter TV, and I'm back with another one. The Therapist, part four. Part four. This story is about Harry. Ha Harry. Harry. Crazy name, right? Harry Henry. Harry Harry. Harry, like. Harry Harry. You feel me? So, Harry Harry. Um, he visits the therapist. Calm dude. But his thing is, he has a, 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 a um, obsession with children. He likes little kids, boys or girls, and he likes them between the ages of seven to ten. You know what I mean? He likes little kids. He's infatuated with them, and he has a condition. When he comes across a kid, he's like he's fixated with him to the point where he tries to take them and do all types of weird shit with them. It could be sexual. It could be. It could be hurtful. You know what I mean? He has this very weird obsession with them and whatnot um he goes to the therapist so the therapist basically can try him try to get him to sway him out that that obsession which he requires four hours of a talk session um he requires four hours and you know daniel took it upon himself to say i done had my share of these clients this is this is getting beyond me. He got a dude named Harry. And he's obsessed with kids. He requires four hours. Um, Harry's about, he's about in his thirties. You know, he's not mentally stable. He's being taken care of by his mom. Um, he also, you know, has to be monitored while he's home or family comes around. He can't be around when the kids is around. He basically, he basically has to, be with in a, in a range of an adult you know what i mean he has to be in a range within an adult um and he goes to the therapist and when he goes to the therapist his mom takes him she drops him off at the therapist she takes him and she makes sure he goes into the therapist harry has to be seen walking in the building by everybody that knows that he's so if he has an appointment with the therapist he has to go up to the receptionist let her know that he's here he has to be seen seated in the waiting area where he could be seen visually and when he leaves the therapist he has to be seen sitting waiting for his mom to come um when the mom comes security has to walk him downstairs and walk him upstairs so in all plain sight harry has to be envisioned because he's not mentally stable he will leave he will wander off he will go look for kids he will go to schools he will look for these kids he could be at the gate trying to get them to come outside the gate he's had plenty you know he has plenty ways of trying to get to these kids and you know for the past three months he hasn't been able to get to because his mom has to look over him now mind you his mom is a much older lady um she's a retired retired police officer um when he was little he you know was doing stuff with other kids and he thought that was cool to do until you know the people in the neighborhood told his mom and then she had to put him and you no, know, get him tested in the head. She had to do all types of shit to see what was wrong with her son. And as he grew older, he became more infatuated with like kid porn, you know, cartoons and cartoons with porn with kids in it. So this guy mentally is not okay. Those are the therapists. You know, the therapists basically talk to him. And you know, when he brings up kids, um, the therapist he, she wants the therapist to redirect him, basically. So. The therapist, Daniel, he would talk about adult stuff. He would talk about, you know, about paying bills, about going to bars, going to, you know, sports games, you know, going to concerts and stuff like that. And Harry just, he would, he would engage in conversation, but he will, you know, he would notice like he's trying to redirect him from talking about kids. So he would talk about when Harry, when he would do that, Harry would talk about puzzles because, you know, kids likes puzzles. He would talk about coloring because kids like to color. He would talk about anything a kid would do. He would talk about it. Now, if it's pertaining to adults, like bills, drinking, um, cooking, he would fall from it. So then you had a way of telling him, like, you know, there's, there's kids that likes to do these adult things as well. And Henry, he, he, my bad. Harry doesn't like to hear that kids like to do adult things. He want kids to be kids. So when he hears stuff like that, he gets thrown off. 
and he gets he gets you know he gets angry you know wants to hear kids doing adult things he wants to hear kids doing kids things it's just a weird obsession a very weird obsession and you know his time at the therapist he gets very annoyed with it because he wants to hear about kids he wants to watch kids and his room you know his bedroom he has a camera in his bedroom he has three cameras in his bedroom from different angles he got one by the window he got one by the door and he got one by the closet so his mom can monitor him all day while she's home even when she's not home and he's home with you know a caretaker you know when his mom needs to run out so he has all that on him you know what i mean and whatever he does in his room he has all right it's his privacy you know the therapist basically she's he's just trying to get him to you know get molded out of that which is hard you know so he requires about four hours of a therapy four hours you know and it requires for him to have at least two months with it which the doctor think two months talking to somebody that's an adult will kind of change him you know what i mean because if you talk about a kid he'll be stuck on the subject and it'll be hard to get him off so he's been going to the therapist for about a month now and he's been while going to the therapist he's basically learning new ways of trying to escape from going to the therapist this particular time his mom was in a rush and he saw this one kid coming down the street the kid had to be about 11 maybe 12 years old which was out of his range and when he seen this young lady this a young lady she was on her way to school she had on a nice little outfit you know charter school outfit <laughs> she had on that she was on her way to school and when he seen her he got he got blown away he could smell her hair when it when it flew past him he, he liked the cute outfit she was wearing within five minutes of that harry snatched the little girl up threw her in the alley and fondled the fuck out of her he fondled the fuck out of this little girl the little girl was developing fast you know there's little kids out here that develop much faster than others she was developing where she had she had some she had some tatas you know what i'm saying she had some tatas she had some tatas and she was um she was starting to be, go through puberty as well so harry he was fondling her he was digging in her pants while she was trying to scream out for help he put his hand over her mouth and he fondled her he groped her he put his hand in her pants he smelt her he put his hands in her private areas and he smelt his fingers and he licked it and she got scared um but the little girl did escape she kicked him in his nuts he got off her and she ran and she ran to school and she told somebody harry then went into his therapy went into his therapy and act like nothing happened so through his whole therapy session he kept smelling his fingers he kept doing this and then you started to notice like why you keep smelling your fingers is your fingers okay and then he asked him like can you turn your hands over and he had nothing on his hands he just had the, the young lady scent on his hands he had her fragrant smell on his clothes and daniel was like you smell a little little feminine like you sprayed yourself with girl per girl perfume and he was like no i may have hugged someone that had that on but i ain't spray that on me and then he kept smelling his hands he's smelling the girl's vagina off his fingers smelling her pubic hairs this motherfucker was a straight weirdo then he got a he after he done had that episode he went home and he looked up child porn with and then he looked up little preteen girls with hairy vaginas you feel what i'm saying he did that and he just got so amazed by it like turned him the fuck on like boy caught a woody and from that point on he did he did that again he then ran into a little boy who was about eight years old during the time he was going to therapy <laughs> he was going to therapy he ran into an eight-year-old old boy who was on his way to school his mother had just crossed him the street now this is the crazy part his mother had just crossed him the street she watched him go towards this uh the crossing guard once the crossing guard got him across the street harry then blended in with the adults right he blended in with the adults as the kid was walking by he done snatched the little boy up took him and ran to an alley and the adults saw him they saw him they was like that kid just that that guy just snatched that kid up get him get him he did that and on the side of the bed where the therapist is it's a it's a door there like an exit door that you could go through he took the kid in there and he fondled the kid in his private area he 
was sticking his hands all in his private. He was rubbing all on his face. He was rubbing his hands through his hair, filling on his ears. He was kissing on him. And the kid was like, just get off me, get off me. And he was screaming for help. And then what happened was the kid picked up like a piece of glass and he stuck Harry right in his face with it, right, right under his eye. And he cut him. And then Harry got so mad and he started going nuts. The kid ran. And when he ran, Harry saw the door. He went through the door. And the kid didn't remember his face, neither did the little girl. So that happened and he went into the building. So when he went into the building, he ducked in the bathroom. So when the adults came in, they was like, did the guy come in here? And he was like, no, no, right? He didn't come in here. So they had left out. So Harry then pops out of place and goes into his therapy session. Now these incidents been going on. You know what I'm saying? These incidents been going on and the therapist asked him what happened to his face because he started bleeding. He had a little cut and he was bleeding. He's like, oh, I hit my face coming around the corner. Quick with the lies. I hit my face when I was coming around the corner. Looks great. I tried to be fast. He's like, you were right. You sure you don't need a Band-Aid or something? He's like, I'm cool, man. It's just nothing. I'll just get some tissue and I'll call it a day. Can we get the session started? So he kept smelling this. He did that same thing. He did the girl. He was smelling his fingers, smelling the boy's genitals all on his fingers and shit like that. He was doing that and he had a routine of trying to get these kids because he knew he had a, a five second window where he can go fondle a kid and then run into his therapy session right before the therapy session started. So this been going on and this one particular guy, this bum on the street, he started noticing the routine was going on. He seen it twice happen in the same alley where he lays his head. So the cops was you know patrolling the area the particular time the bum was in the area and they saw the bum on the floor and the bum was like hey what did i do and they was asking him questions like have you seen a guy back here fondling kids and he was like yes yeah, there's one particular weird dude who comes he wait for the kids to come he gets dropped off in front he wait for the kids to come he snatch them up and he run down and he be and he be touching them and then the kids just so happen to escape if the kids don't escape i'm pretty sure he'll do worse now, this is a bum on the street telling the cops this. And the cops is like, wow, this is going on. Where do you see him run? The, cop, the the bum didn't know where he runs to afterwards. All he knew was he found the kid. He hears him, like, grunt or get hurt because like, the kid hurt him and escaped. By the time he opens up his box to see what's going on, he sees the kid running and he, the guy just disappears. And, and he's like, it must be this door right here because that's the only place I know he can run. Ain't no dude his size running on the wall. So the dude was like, can you describe him? He's like, he's a big dude, curly hair, and he's a white guy. Uh, he looked like he's slow on his feet. Don't look like he's always all the way there. And he was like, that's all your description? Yeah, I didn't really see his face. I just know he had curly hair because I seen him from the back. And I also seen his hands. So the police got a little description, not much to go on. So the next session, right, these two black girls is walking to school. They walk into the charter school. One girl is about nine years old. The other is about 11. Now, these two girls, one of them is trained. She goes to boxing. The nine-year-old girl, she goes to boxing. Um, these girls are friends. They live in the same neighborhood with each other, and they go to school together. Um, Daniel is so happened to be walking behind these young ladies, and he also sees uh, Harry coming out the car with his mom. Harry urges kicking real fast, real quick. And when he went to go touch the girl... Then you grabbed him. Hey, come on. Come on, buddy. Glad I caught you this morning, man. He was very upset by that. And then the little girl looks back at him. And Harry looks back, shakes his head and smiles. And then she tells her friend, like, yo, that guy was a creep. And the older girl was like, I think he tried to grab you or something. And I was like, he better not because these hands are swiftly. My dad taught me how to fight, especially big men like him. I'll knock his big ass out. This little black girl talking crazy. So... Harry was like, he really went to end the session early today. He's like, can we just do two hours, man? I'm really not in the mood today. Um, I just want to go home. I don't feel too good. I don't feel too good. He said, you sure? Or was it because I stopped you from trying to get with those girls? He said, nah, man. I don't just don't feel too good, man. I don't feel too good, man. Uh, can we end it early? He's like, you know you can't end this early. You know your mom drops you off for four hours for me to talk to you. Come on, let's talk about the stuff. He's like, I don't want to do that today, man. I don't want to do that today. So then you reflects on, he reflects on the times you was eager to talk to me 
And then you were smelling your hands. What's, that, what's the matter? You're not smelling your hands today? You say, you know, I'm not smelling my hands today. Ah, you ain't been touching no kids, huh? So Harry's like, what you talking about? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, it's been two incidents since you've been coming here in the past two weeks regarding children, Harry. Actually, someone actually saw you fondle a little boy the other day, but he didn't get your face. That makes sense of why you've been smelling your hands. And when I stopped you today, you got very agitated because you really want to touch that girl. Maybe both of them. And if I wasn't there, who knows what happened? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody wasn't thinking about that girl. I was going to pick up her bow. It fell on the floor. Then he picks up the bow, which he, and he instantly snatched it off her hair. But the girl didn't notice and neither did Daniel. So that happened. And when that happened, he's like, see, see. He was like, give it here. No, nah, I'm going to keep it. When I see her again, I'm going to give it to her. I'm going to give it to her. Promise you that. Right? So we're going to fast forward about a week before Daniel's time is up. And during the week, he actually been making progress and been talking about adult stuff. Why he's been doing this? Because he's been shielding the fact that he has these urges so he can, so he can get people to fall back off him. He was learning a few things when he was watching the show. When you fix something, it gives you better... It gives you better ways of toning to get people to trust you. So Harry was basically learning in the past three weeks before his last week. With that being said, the two girls that Daniel came across, he ends up meeting their mom. And the him and the mom been dating. So he's been dating this black lady with the two girls. Well, not the two girls, but the one little girl. And the little girl is like, I remember you. You, you stopped that guy from grabbing me. Um, the mom eventually introduced them, and Daniel's been dating this little girl's mom and getting very acquainted with her and the little girl. Now, the little girl's father is in her life. Um, the little girl's father is a trainer, and, you know, she's very comfortable with Daniel because Daniel don't do nothing crazy, you know. Daniel also wants a family of his own, which he explained to the woman. And the woman wants to be married, so she realized he was married before and he got cheated on, so he has little trust issues. So with that being said, what happens now is we're going to fast forward. Daniel's time is uh, Harry, Harry's time is up and he's made progress to the point where he could be around kids and not do nothing. Right. He's made his time. Um, but that being said, he has went three months after seeing a therapist with no incidents. Now, the therapist is a Danish woman. Um, they fell in love, got acquainted real fast, uh, got married and she was pregnant. Now, how this story ends is Harry sees the little girl walking. I want to say we fast forward a year. A year after they got married and she's about eight months pregnant, about to have another baby. The little girl is about 10 years old now. She was on her way to school by herself. Um, Harry was just so happy to walk by. He kept that barrette in his pocket because he knew he was going to run into her again. And... He ran into her again, and also the little girl was having another girl bully her, which was another it was another girl, white girl, bullying her. And this girl was bullying her because she had people in her life that loved her, and the other girl didn't. So she saw Harry, and she saw Harry snatch the little black girl up, snatched her up, raped the girl, and killed her, and placed his placed that barrette on her chest and left her body there. The little girl saw it and was infatuated by Harry. And she walked up to Harry and was like, you did a good job, Harry. Go home. I'm not going to tell nobody I saw you. To be continued, man. To be continued. It's your boy.